This video is brought to you by these YouTube members, and they don't even know it. Ah, right, look, I lied. It's actually a top 11 video. I know the thumbnail says top 10, but there's 11 anniversary characters and it felt weird to leave one out. What are you gonna do, beat me up? Anyway, as always, this is my opinion. If you don't like it, make your own, yada yada yada. Let's get started. Now one would assume that it being a top 10 anniversary characters, the one at the very bottom of the list, or I guess the very top of the list, will be the very first anniversary character, but one would be an idiot. This is because, at least until it gets resurrected, the worst anniversary character by far is the 4th anniversary full Haluichigo. Now personally, I like this character, I like the gameplay, I love the design, and we definitely needed a remake of him. That said, this is not the remake we needed. Now before we get into why, let's talk about this character for a bit. He's got a really high attack, He's got a moderately high attack, as well as flurry and poise. And that's it. Look, they gave him a Captain Killer because he was supposed to be a PvP character, to counter Manga Yachiru who was kinda dominant in PvP for the longest time, but at the time Beyond Resurrection no Itora had just come out, and he was definitely the better option, essentially making this guy pointless. Well, I shouldn't say pointless. At the time, he was a pretty good PvP character since he had Prevent Brave Battle Healing and decreased damage taken from captains by 20%. There were just better options for PvP than him, and this list is based on today's standards, and there's definitely better options than him now. Though, fingers crossed with his resurrection. What the? Martin, stop! Are you... me? I am! From several hours from now, the 4th anniversary character's resurrection abilities have been revealed, making you wrong for the first time ever in any of your videos! That's not true, I'm wrong all the time! You read the comments! Shh, just scoot over! Hey! Martin speaking. Alright, so what do we got here? It actually looks like the 4th anniversary for Holly Ichigo is gonna get some better abilities. Really? Yeah! 50% bruiser! The sprinter's gonna be moved to innate skills, which is awesome. And he's gonna get Brave Battle Temporary Invincibility for 10 seconds. Nice! But wait, what about the Soul Trait? That'll be low stamina damage increase of 24%. Well, I guess that makes sense. Pairs well with the Last Ditch Survival. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought, too. But wait, what does that- how does- how does that affect the ranking? Well, honestly, that's weird. I'd probably put him at number 10. You still probably wouldn't use him for a PvP character, unless you absolutely had to, but he's a pretty good link now, and thanks to the Bruiser at 50, he could survive a lot more in an auto run. That's fair. But wait, what about Mugetsu Ichigo? Right, him. So we'll get to him, but for now I think it's best you continue the video, as if I was never here. To preserve continuity and the space-time continuum. True. This world's got enough problems. We don't need to be responsible for the destruction of space and time. Okay, now for the actual top 10 list, at number 10 we have Lunar Ichigo, or I guess second anniversary Ichigo, a character who I still enjoy using from time to time. He's got a respectably high SP as well as Frenzy. He's also got a strong attack damage link of 25%, and his strong attack 3 is a charge move that doubles in strength when fully charged. When he got resurrected, he also got a strong attack recharge link of 10%, effectively making him one of the best links in the entire game, and he got Havoc at 20, increasing the range of all of his strong attacks, making his fully charged strong attack 3 beyond full screen. Fun fact, he was also the only charge move character who had a full screen strong attack 3 without Havoc. It's just a little wise old man knowledge for you. Anyway, in addition to the Great Link and Havoc, he also got Berserker at 20%, letting him deal even more damage. See, now that's how you make a resurrection character. Why can't we have more of this? Anyway, he's also got a great killer of a wrong car, and he has Sprinter at 2, letting him easily dodge specials and maneuver around the area easily. Plus, it's really helpful when trying to charge a strong attack 3. Overall, yeah, there are better characters, but as far as really old characters go, he's still pretty usable. Mugets. Okay, now we step things up a little bit, and these next two are kind of interchangeable in my mind. So if you don't agree, eh, whatever. At number 9, we have the 4th anniversary version of Mugetsu. Full Hollow Ichigo and Mugetsu Ichigo were, until recently, the only time we ever got actual canon characters as anniversary characters. And while White Ichigo was a little bit disappointing, this guy was anything but. He had a really high SP as well as Frenzy, weakening on everything, great range on strong attacks including a quick activated strong attack too, on par with Manga Toshiro which at the time was really big, two killers of Hollow and No Affiliation which at the time was only ever given to 
tag team characters, so this was a pretty big deal. Complete immunity to being frozen, which considering one of his killers is hollow is pretty nice, and Sprinter at 2, so you know, he gets all the benefits of that. Now as far as today's standards go, he's still a very usable character. Don't get me wrong, he doesn't stack up to modern characters, but two killers, weakening, and frenzy gets you a long way. Plus, being able to dodge enemy specials, and being able to heal yourself for 20% of your health every time you enter a new area, can really come in handy, especially when you throw in a full stamina damage link or bonus ability. Mugetsu is by far the coolest Ichigo has ever looked, and it's honestly pretty strange we don't have more versions of this character. I'm really looking forward to his resurrection, and I really think it's gonna happen sooner rather than later. And this is why you should really be careful what you wish for. Uh, this guy again. Seriously, I blame this line, the thing you just said, for me having to come back here. But look, as far as Mugetsu goes, he actually did get some pretty good updates. Like what? Well, for starters, he got an innate skill. He now has Havoc at 20. That's awesome. He already had really good range. That makes his strong attack 3 beyond full screen and his strong attack 2, like, pretty near full screen. Yeah, and that's not all. You know how he can recover 20% of his stamina after every area? Yeah. Well, that serves a greater purpose now. His secondary link is a full stamina damage link, but it only affects strong attack damage. On the upside though, it is 20%. Oh, well honestly I would have preferred just a standard strong attack damage link, even if it was only 16%. Yeah, I know, me too. But hey, on the bright side he has the second highest SP in the entire game now, second only to Manga Aizen. Oh, yeah that's really cool. Yeah, and full hollow Ichigo has the highest attack in the entire game now. Oh, impressive. You don't really sound that impressed. Well, I don't know man, I just... I'm just thinking that this video is going to be a hassle to edit, not to mention it's going to be really long now. Hey, I don't know why you're complaining, I'm the one who had to rip a hole in space time. Plus, I'm going to have to be the one that edits this. You're not even going to remember any of this. What do you mean? Yeah, look, I didn't want to tell you, but I'm going to have to wipe your memory. Well, I don't want my memory, but I know, I know, but look, it has to happen. Alright, if it has to happen, but hey, what about Mugetsu Ichigo? Does this placing move up any? Yeah, I'd probably put him in the number 8 spot now. Yeah, that's fair. Is this going to hurt? No. Why'd you pause? Alright, so I won't lie, I kinda went back and forth between Ukiora and Mugetsu Ichigo, but in the end I ended up putting Ukiora ahead of Ichigo. Now personally, I do think Ichigo is the more usable character. That said, I'm kind of taking everything into consideration, and if you don't have either character, you're probably far more likely to want Ukiora than Ichigo. This is because Ukiora has actually been resurrected, and with his resurrection came one of the best links in the entire game. Similar to second anniversary Ichigo, this guy also has a strong attack damage link of 25% and strong attack recharge at 10%. He also got 20% Berserker with his resurrection, and that's it. That's all he got. They could have given him Debilitator, they should have given him Debilitator, but they didn't give him Debilitator. Still, even without it, he is a really good character. He's got a lunge move, strong attack 1, a strong attack 3 that's a charge move and doubles in strength when fully charged, and even though he doesn't have Havoc and he should have got Havoc, still has a pretty good range with it, hitting nearly full screen. All of his attacks, with the exception of his strong attack 2, can inflict weakening, and his strong attack 2 is a barrier move and a boost move, which, thanks to Enhancer and his newly acquired strong attack recharge link, can essentially make him an infinite boost character if you build him correctly. In addition to that, this character also has poise. Now normally that's best served for normal attacking characters. And at the time that he came out, you only really saw it on PvP characters. But I'm sure I don't have to tell you why not being able to be interrupted is really good for a character with a charge move. So yeah, in the end, his resurrection should have made him a little bit better. And while I do still think Ichigo is a slightly more usable character, Ukiora fits in a lot more needed demographic. After all, there are plenty of heart soul reapers with hollow or no affiliation killers. There are far fewer Spada with no affiliation killers. Plus, the link. These next two were also pretty difficult. Well, let's start off with the 5th anniversary version of Ichigo, shall we? For starters, he's got huge damage potential, having a really high SP as well as Berserker at 60% and Frenzy. On top of that, all of his attacks can inflict debilitating weakening and his strong attack 3 is a charge move that doubles in strength when fully charged, something that's particularly good when you have Berserker at 60%. This Ichigo also has Havoc, meaning that at full charge, his strong attack 3 is just slightly beyond full screen, and his strong attack 2 is very near full screen, hitting a very large area in front of him. His strong attack 1 is a lunge move, and he's got Marauder, which is essentially guard break and ignore melee resistance in one. Topping everything off, he's also got Sprinter at two, which we've covered Sprinter already many times on the channel. Basically, the more you have, the less likely you are to get hit by specials. Plus, it's easier to charge a charge move. 
Overall, very, very solid character. A killer of Hollow and the Ronkar, two of the best killers to have. Honestly, his damage output far exceeds Byakuya's, both because of the Berserker and the weakening, not to mention the charge move. But Byakuya being Byakuya, sometimes being a guinea pig does pay off. Okay, so allow me to explain the last line, for those of you who may not remember, or simply just don't know. Historically in this game, Byakuya has kinda had the reputation of being a guinea pig. Not for every single thing, obviously, but he was the very first Frenzy character, the first character with a static vortex move, the first character with the vortex move that surrounds you, the first character with the barrier move, and the first character with the seeking vortex move. Now while they haven't all worked out for him, the seeking vortex move definitely did. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Byakuya has a really high SP as well as Frenzy. He's also got Berserker and Bruiser at 40% and Bombardment, meaning his special hits twice as much. His strong attack 1 is a shave shot move and his strong attack 3 is a vortex move that gathers enemies in one spot and then hits them one final time. Very useful for crowd control. And speaking of crowd control, let's go ahead and talk about his strong attack 2. As I mentioned before, it's a seeking vortex move and it's by far the best strong attack type in the game. Byakuya's in particular is a little bit interesting, seeing as it was the first. And because of this, Kira didn't really know exactly just how OP it would be. Out of every character with this type of vortex move, his is the only one that hits twice before Frenzy is applied, before the vortex actually starts. Every other character either only hits once before Frenzy, or not at all, it just kinda starts. This makes this one of the harder hitting strong attacks of this type, even with Frenzy only being at 1. Also, this character has a 14% strong attack recharge link, giving him the potential of a 56% if you build him correctly. Considering the vortex lasts about 5 seconds, and he's getting his vortex move back every 7 seconds, you're only giving enemies about 2 seconds of free time before you can activate it again. Now do keep that in mind since it will come up again, and I don't really feel like explaining it every single time. Byakuya also has Sharpshooter, which is the range equivalent of Marauder, and like Ichigo before him, also has two killers, his being of Hollow and Soul Reaper. Now they were a very similar standing on this list, and while Ichigo does have a higher damage output, I do still feel that Byakuya does come out on top, having a slightly better killer, bombardment, and of course, that strong attack too. <laughs> Despite having a Soul Reaper affiliation himself, the 6th anniversary version of Aizen is the epitome of anti-Soul Reaper. Not only does he have a Soul Reaper killer and a Captain killer, meaning you're extra effective against Captains, unless it's Shinji Rose, but he's also completely immune to being paralyzed, which is his Soul Reaper's favorite element. In addition to this, he's also got an ability that basically makes him dodge 50% of all Soul Reaper damage. This is just crazy. Out of the 655 6 star characters we have in the game, 397 of them have a Soul Reaper affiliation. That's 60% of the entire game's 6 star characters. It's safe to say that the Soul Reaper affiliation is definitely the most common and the best killer to have. It's also the best affiliation to have some sort of resistance against. Now on the off chance he does get damaged, Aizen does have a way to recover, as all of his attacks have a chance to inflict both debilitating weaken and drain, and this helps him because in addition to having frenzy at 2, he's also got an ability that increases the amount of damage he deals at full health by another 20%, and he is extremely likely to inflict some sort of ailment. Much like Byakuya's, this is also a seeking vortex, though unlike Byakuya's, his only strikes once before the actual vortex begins. Doesn't matter though since he has frenzy at 2, and remember with the right build, enemies will really only have 2 seconds of free time between his strong attack too, so you're likely to inflict it somewhere. His other strong attacks are also crazy powerful, with a beam shot strong attack 1 with crazy range, and a beyond full screen strong attack 3. To top everything off, he's also got sharpshooter. <laughs> Next up, we have the 7th anniversary version of Ichigo. He may not have Frenzy at 2 like Aizen, but he does have an incredibly high chance to inflict both paralysis and weakening. And when he does, his SP goes up by 80%. And because math, this means he can actually deal more damage than Aizen in some cases. Though it's not really as consistent. Ichigo here does have a really high SP as well as Berserker at 40%. 
He's got Frenzy at 1, the ability to hit hidden enemies, Sharpshooter, Debilitator, Bombardment, a 12% chance to inflict weakening or paralysis per enemy every 5 seconds just by existing, meaning there's a chance you can just activate the 80% SP increase just by standing there, Havoc at 20, and grants complete status immunity to every member of the party. Which, you know, team player, good for him. His strong attacks all have really great range, and his strong attack too, much like Aizen's and Byakuya's, is a Seeking Vortex move. Though his can inflict weakening and paralysis, and I'd much rather have paralysis and drain. Ichigo also has a boosted 14% strong attack recharge link, and he has the best possible combination of killers in the entire game, Soul Reaper and Aronkar. Not only are these two of the more common mob enemy types in the game, but out of the 655 6 star characters as of this recording, a whopping 517 fall under this category. That's nearly 80% of every playable character in the game. You might even be a Soul Reaper or Ronkar. That's how common they are. Of the two anniversary characters we got last year, I do think that Ichigo is the more usable character. Normally, I favor usable characters over characters that hit harder, but at a certain point, one does outweigh the other. <laughs> Now Uryu here has a really high SP as well as Frenzy F2, self scout Berserker at 20%, and an ability that increases every speed character in your team's strong attack damage by 20%. He's also got crazy range on his strong attacks thanks to Havoc also being at 20%, and he's got both guard break and hit hidden enemies. In addition to that, if the enemy is a power enemy, there's also an additional 10% per hit for him to be able to inflict a status element, which he can do with all of his strong attacks. They can all inflict both debilitating weakening and drain, allowing him to not only deal more damage, but also receive less damage and heal up. He can also heal up every time he enters a new area, as he has party stamina recovery at 20%. He can also spam his strong attacks a bit better than other characters, since Uryu here was the guinea pig for the gauge ability. Essentially, you have a gauge that fills up as you attack. When it's filled up, the following strong attack activates it, and for a limited time, specific abilities apply, depending on the character. For Uryu, he gets his strong attacks back 30% faster. But that's not all. He also gets a 100% increase in Berserker, effectively doubling his strong attack damage, and he takes 50% less damage overall. And remember, he's constantly healing. This gives him a total of 140% strong attack damage on enemies that are very likely weakened before Frenzy is applied twice. This is absolutely ridiculous. Now while the gauge meter does deplete very fast, it can still be charged for the next usage as it's depleting, and because your strong attacks are coming back faster, it is also charging faster. Like most of the other characters on this list, he also has two killers of no affiliation and a wrong card. He's also got an extra sprinter and long stride. To top things off, his special is incredibly good, applying debilitating weakening, drain, and the debuff condition, resulting in a colossal amount of damage as well as healing you. He may be a year old at this point, but he still out damages most of the characters that have come out since him. Admittingly, these last two are very difficult, since they both essentially break new ground. Let me first start off by saying that the hardest hitting of the two new characters is definitely White. With a ridiculous 880 base SP, as well as Frenzy at 2, he can also inflict debilitating laceration and drain with all of his attacks. And if he's up against hard attribute enemies, he's extremely likely to do so. Doing so boosts his SP by 80%. Not only that, but hitting enemies that are lacerated increases his damage by 60%, and hitting enemies that are drained increases it by 40 If he inflicts it, they are both lacerated and drained, increasing the damage to 100% before Frenzy at 2 with an SP increase of 80%. This equals a whole lot of damage, and effectively makes him the hardest hitting character in the entire game. And it doesn't even stop there, because then we have a special. Not only does he have bombardment, meaning it hits with double the damage, but he also has an ability that increases every mind character in the team's special damage by another 30%. And he has weakened defense. To sum it up, on a special, that's weakened defense, 80% SP boost, 30% from his ability, 100% from hitting both lacerated and drained enemies, and bombardment to double it all. That's a colossal amount of damage that also heals you and continues to deal damage to enemies thanks to the laceration. That is a very impressive special. But it's not just a special, because both his strong attacks 1 and 3 are hybrid vortex moves that gather enemies in one spot before hitting them one final time. His strong attack 2 is also two parts, though not a vortex move, and thanks to the Havoc at 20, has really impressive range. White also has Sprinter at 3, Marauder, a complete immunity to all status ailments, and both a soul reaper and no affiliation killer. If I was just calculating damage, he'd be at number one for sure.
sure. I personally can't wait to see how Caleb out damages him, but I hope it doesn't happen for a while. I only wish that this character would be a hollow affiliation instead of no affiliation. It does make sense as to why it's no affiliation, since technically speaking this was a Soul Reaper before. It would just be cool to finally have a character that's just pure hollow. Finally at number 1, we have the newest 8th anniversary version of Ichigo. Finally, a dual wielding Ichigo that's good. He has the highest SP out of any non-resurrected character, and he's the first character ever to have Frenzy at 3. In addition to that, and BBS Simulator just updated. And of course, in the middle of this recording, information for the 4th anniversary resurrected versions of Ichigo has been released. Well, dang. Time to re-record some stuff. Alright, back to this guy. This Ichigo has Frenzy at 3 as well as Sharpshooter, a 100% chance to hit hidden enemies, Havoc at 20, debilitating weakening and drain on all of his attacks, an increased chance of inflicting this settlement against tech enemies, complete immunity to all status elements, not just for him but for the entire party, both poise and the ability to ignore poise on other enemies, except for brave battles, and a 100% chance to read every single dodge on enemies. Plus, if he does all this at full health, he's dealing 20% more damage across the board. And this is very, very likely. Remember, he can inflict weakening and drain on everything, and his strong attack 2 is a seeking vortex move. Except because he's got frenzy at 3, it hits a ridiculous 120 times per enemy, assuming they survive. And remember, he can just have this going more often than not, since because of his 14% strong attack recharge link, if you build him correctly, you can have up to 56% strong attack recharge reduction. And that's just for strong attack 2. The strong attack 1 and 3 are also very impressive and have great range, with a beyond full screen strong attack 3. Finally, there's his killer of hollow and no affiliation. I do think that white got the better end of the deal here, since the Soul Reaper killer is best, but having two killers on anyone is really good. And while white does have the potential to hit harder, I do think that Ichigo got the overall better abilities and moveset, which is why he ended up at number one. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. It took me a bit longer than I'd like to admit to make. It's been a while since I've made one of these, and not only did I have to record 11 characters this time, but I had to redo two of them since they literally got resurrected news as I was recording the last character. But I figured why not make this since, you know, it's the 8th anniversary, and it's been a while. I'm sorry I can't make these as often as I'd like. I have school, and that keeps me pretty busy. And even when I'm not, I kind of just like to relax and not spend hours editing a video or recording a thing, since I'm pretty much glued to a computer screen for my job anyway, and school. I can't promise that they'll be back on a weekly basis, but I can try to make them more frequently, or you know, some of the other series. Anyway, I do thank you guys for watching and hearing me out here. Good luck on your summons, and take care.